Well, it's all quiet on the Arizona front. Uh, the yellow bike is just sitting here at this point in time, not been test ridden. I ordered a uh, LED for the tail light. I had an LED for the headlight, so I ordered an LED for the tail light. Uh, well, as long as it's sitting here. Uh, the goddess is sitting here and looking down below it from an angle. Let's see what we see. I see a, something shining. All right, so there it is. Let's zoom in. That first one, I'm not sure if that's a leak. The second one, no, they're just marks. This, where am I? Not that, not that. Nope. Okay. So the goddess is pretty straightforward clean. All right. Um, the blue guy's up here. Blue Triumph. It's still clean as the whistle underneath of it. I haven't even replaced the missing nut on the uh, center stand yet. Let's just take a look underneath and see what we see. It's clean as a whistle. All right. That's not leak. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is start this thing, uh, let it get really, really warm, and uh, set it on the side stand uh, overnight. But not now because it's like 150 degrees in this garage, and I'm going to go inside. Well, let's see, what is it? It's uh, Friday here in Arizona. Um, Green Goddess is still sitting here. Not a lot of action going on underneath. Yellow bike still sitting here. Ordered the tail light for it. I think. I better double check on that. Uh, it's um, basically just pending a test ride, of which I am not going to do until it cools down some. 
Uh, let's see, over here we have the, uh, the Blue Triumph up on the lift, and it still drives the bone underneath of it. So what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going to start this bike and then put it on its side stand. I'm going to start the, the goddess on the side stand. I'm going to let them both run for a while, get them nice and warm, and let them sling some oil internally, and then uh, leave them sitting on their side stands overnight and see what kind of uh, leakage they may generate. Okay, actually I'm looking down there. Let's see if I can focus down there. There might be two spots, yeah. Two spots down there under the... Uh, the goddess. So let's see if we can make those worse by starting it on the side stand. In the meantime, um, I got a shipment of VR1 oil. I like this stuff. It's made for uh, vintage vehicles, racing and classic cars. Basically made for vehicles that have flat tappets, of which our bikes happen to have. And um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, specially designed for let me see if I can focus in on that. Specially designed for push rod and flat tappet engines. That's us. More zinc for extreme wear protection. Uh, I've had some discussions before on this. Other people have objected to it for various and sundry reasons. I like it. I use it. I've never had a problem with it. And um, so anyway, that's, that's what I prefer for motor oil. Other people have other things. Feel, feel free to comment and say so. Uh, I, I'm going to put that up on the shelf over here. Normally it goes in this area. And up here I just got uh, three boxes of cleaner carb, a carburetor cleaner. This is the 49 state. If it says 50 state on it, don't buy it. But this is the 49 state version. And this, these three cases will last me about a month, about three months or so. Uh, I like it a lot. You know that. I've talked about it before. Anyway, um, this I get through Amazon. This I get through Napa. I, Amazon delivers, and uh, I think I found out that it's less expensive to buy multiple quarts than it is to buy the five-quart bottle. I think I discovered that. So anyway, I get four or six of these every three or four months. Uh, during the uh, colder months, I use it. You know, during these hot months when it's 100 some odd degrees, I don't. I mean, I'm sitting here with basically an empty um, garage and nothing to do. So I'm going to start these bikes and see if I can make them leak. That's today's project. Well, this could be an adventure. It's going to be two cold starts. Uh, same morning. Let's see if I can wear myself out or break a knee.
I'm going to get some uh, heavier boots on before I try starting that Norton. Uh, I might even put it on the lift. So um, I'm going to go get some heavy boots on. Okay, I've swapped positions. The goddess is on the lift. Uh, Nortons are a lot harder to kick over than tramps, so it's easier on the lift with the front wheel clamped. Uh, tramps in the background. Uh, as soon as I get the Norton running and idling, I'll go start the Triumph. Then I will move the Norton down next to the Triumph on its side stand, let them both sit there and run for a while. Here we go. Cold start. I need, a, uh, need to use a choke on this thing or not. Let's find out. <sighs> Go try the choke.
Okay, they're both idling at about a thousand RPM, nice solid idle. Got the fan here in the foreground blowing on them, got the cooler in the background blowing on them. So there air is there is air going over both motors. They won't overheat. Uh, so I'm gonna let them sit there for about 10, 15 minutes. Bottom line is if they're gonna leak, they're gonna leak. And just going any farther or longer than that uh, really wouldn't be productive. So I'm, not, I'm gonna turn this off and come back to you after I uh, let them sit there for a while. Okay, that's long enough. Um, they're now thoroughly warm and on the on the side stand. If they're going to leak, they're going to leak. If they're not, they're not. And uh, we'll see what happens um, over the next 24 hours because I'm just going to let them sit right there. Okay, so in the meantime, while they were idling away, I put away my oil. It's over here on the shelf. And I put away the cleaner car bits on the shelf, so I did a little bit of house cleaning. Cl house